Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm very proud, very privileged to be sitting here this evening with one of Sheffield's all-time sporting greats. Three world championships, twice a Commonwealth gold medal winner and many, many more trophies and honours besides. If I listed them all, there probably wouldn't be time to chat <laughs> to our guest this evening, who is Nick Matthew. Hi, Alan. Good evening, Nick. Lovely to see you. You too. Um, since your previous visit, and I think this is your third, um, a major thing has changed in your life. You're a mature man now of 38 years old and no longer chasing a squash ball around a court after a career of, what, 20-odd years? Well, I am actually still, <laughs> just, still on, but just in a different capacity now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am retired from the tour. Um, still trying to play competitively for a number of years, sort of on the non-tour stuff, league matches, training up players from my academy. I actually got beaten by one of them this afternoon. Did you? Uh, so I need to train a bit harder. I've, I've let it go a little bit this summer, so I need to get back in shape, really. But still, the sport will always be in my blood really. I mean, it's not like I'm retiring and setting off to the sunset and working on my golf handicap. I'm busier than ever at the moment. That's good to hear. We'll come to how you're busier than ever in a minute. <laughs> sure. It'll be a wide ranging chat because I know you've got a passion for football and many uh, other sports. I would imagine just before we kick on that being beaten by a protege has its, uh, has its upside these days. Yeah, it, Are you, you're it means, no, no, it means that the work that you do is, is good exactly. for a start. But um, no, it's, uh, it was a Scottish player, Scottish number one, who's actually just moved to Sheffield uh, um, to work with myself and my team. And he's currently ranked 30 in the world. So he wasn't exactly a protege. He's already pretty good before he yeah. got there. So not that bad a loss. No. Well, let, let's just say <laughs> that uh, eagle-eyed... Uh, Members of our audience this evening will have uh, seen this. Let's have that glinting in the studio lights. And it's the first time I've ever held a gold medal. I've certainly not received one for, for anything. And this is one of uh, Nick's two uh, Commonwealth gold uh, medals. This is the second of them from Glasgow 2014. You also won in 2010 as well. So that, I, I should imagine, because it was a request to me, to, uh, from me, for you to bring this down this evening for us to have a look at it i should imagine this just sits in a box somewhere you never even look at it is that right or what worryingly yeah the wear ones, it if you like no, that's one. fine the <laughs> ones uh from delhi there was one in the doubles as well but obviously the singles ones uh, you know the things that we most cherish because that's what we play week in week out but they my manager had the bright idea of look putting them in this lovely frame and they're all still there look great on the wall at my club at hallamshire on exor road but yeah, not that practical if a group of school children want to see sort of the medals because you can't exactly walk around with a big frame like that. So I keep that one out and it's been sort of, uh, it was in Abbey Lane School last week, High Stores last week, sort of did the tour a yeah. little bit. I'm able to go out and see a few more uh, schools and try and inspire them to get into squash now. So it's always nice to, it's a bit of a show and tell, isn't it? It's nice it's great. to... Uh, isn't it a shame that you, you, you feel it was a bit naff just to wear it? I mean, they're, they're there to wear it. To wear. I'm sure you didn't say, when you won that, for instance, in Glasgow, and I know it meant, you know, something very special to you. Did you not take it off for as long as possible, or what? Or did you just? Well, the, there was no respite. Unfortunately, the, the gold medal. Matt, it was a, probably the hectic few weeks of my life. Actually, I went, which is one of my it's one of my most cherished possessions because I had knee surgery about four and a half weeks before the games in Glasgow in 2014, and didn't think I was going to be able to make no. it at some stage. And you know, amazing work from the sort of physio and and, and S and C team that worked behind me, and got me there, got me to the start line, played every day, two matches the first day, every day consecutive, and then the gold medal match, I think we finished at about 6pm, anti-doping, went straight to the BBC with medal on, did the interviews, bite to eat, straight to bed, and I was on the doubles court for my first round of doubles at 9am the following day, so there wasn't much time to wear it, to, to be honest, just, there wasn't much time it. to celebrate, there wasn't much time, it was straight in. Yeah, So what about at home? Come on. Never, never. never. Do you I ever walk around at home? I do I, not walk around my medal at home. No, my wife would shoot me down <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, I tell you, as a humble half marathon runner, on the day that I run a race, and I don't come first, by the way, yeah. 3,064 3, yeah. of us, 
Oh, where am I for most yeah. of that day? Did you do the 10K just, the other week? I didn't do that one. I'm training for half marathon. Okay. Right. It's I too short for you. It's too I take much of it off. For you, it's too one. short. Okay. Too short. I take it off just before I go to the pub at night. So yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's fantastic to see that. Um, three world titles. Just such a, you know, you devoted so much time and energy. And anybody who's played squash knows what an exhausting, punishing game <laughs> it is to have played it at the level that you have for so long. You know, and now to pause and stop, I'm thinking that could be a difficulty, a problem. Yeah, which is why, you know, I want to, I took about 10 weeks off this summer and just had a total break and for once in my life got a bit of colour on my skin and nice tan for once. You know, yeah. normally I'm pale, I've been living and all can, my can couple enjoy of beers, beers, so I'm a few kilos heavier than what I was pre yeah. at my fighting weight. But yeah, I feel sort of recharged now. And, you know, one thing that's, I knew this was going to be the case anyway, but one thing that's been made clearer than ever is how much I love the sport. And I was like raring to get back on and start working with the young players and help them. And I've got a bit of a role with England squash, helping the national government body. I'm over in Manchester tomorrow working with the academy team, mm -hmm. so the next generation, because there's going to be a bit of a generational gap. There's a few of the England team are sort of reaching the... Uh, you know the bus pass age right. so we need to crack on with those young ones and I've got an academy of my own um, both sides of the Atlantic one in the US one here all oh, right um, you know and I'm trying to keep my own playing standard just because I enjoy it I played a National League game on Tuesday night and I just got a bit nervous before I walked on court because I'd not played for pretty yeah. much 12 weeks you know I had a couple of weeks back on court but it's my first proper match and yeah. I found myself being a bit nervous so I was like you know I'll miss not being competitive, even though my standard is marginally less, yeah. uh, you know, I miss not being competitive. So it's probably a little did bit of win? a transition. I did. I did. Oh, <laughs> I, managed okay, to stay. I played someone coming back from injury, so I know that all too well. He yeah. wasn't quite at his best, but um, I just love the buzz of still playing. But it's my choice now whenever I step on court. Yeah. You know, no yeah. one's saying to me in the back of my mind, you have to do this session, you have to do that, otherwise you're not going to get the end result I can yeah. choose now if I wanted to take a week off I could if I wanted to play every day for a week I could so you it's could, totally you, you my could choice you literally now. play for pleasure now exactly exactly that's purely so. purely for pleasure and I always I, love the sport yeah. but there's always those sessions where you do it because it's your job yeah whereas now it's totally different you get in other sports for instance cricket football I think retirement means retirement for a lot of those guys yeah. they stop and they start that's yeah, it yeah you know they don't play yeah. any form of the sport um, squash is a bit different in that respect. Well, well, you don't need. You only need one other person. Yeah, I mean, it's else. not been done too much before, where someone is sort of retired. Normally, you you go, oh, thank God that's over now. I've enjoyed it, but I'm, there's a reason why you retired, right? You think I'm done, and you move on, and you just go totally into that, um, you know, next phase. Whereas I feel like I'm probably still. Of course, I'm retired, but I'm in a transitional, almost semi-retirement phase where I still want to play to a ideally a top 20 top 30 level in the world um so you know, i lost to the world number yeah. 30 today so that's maybe around my standard right so now about 30 really in the retired, world so i'm retired retire. from the tour i'm retired yeah. from training day in day out but i want to play for fun and i'm so competitive that i wouldn't enjoy it if i was uh, sort of overweight and losing to every man and his dog, I still want no. to... Uh, Has there been a pang of regret in a single moment since you pulled out from top? No, 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 it was completely yeah. the right decision. I said the body couldn't take the day in, day out rigour of the training now. Yeah. Um, as I said, I can play when I want now, I can train when I want. The body feels probably better than it's done for three or four years because I'm not putting it through, you know, the, the, the treadmill of that day in, day out work it's not just on the court it's all the off the court sessions you know if I decide to go and do a gym session to keep fit now I can do the bits that I enjoy <laughs> don't have to do those horrible ugly bits anymore <laughs> <laughs> and believe me there's plenty of those ugly ones you yeah. know you have to do a swimming session or a bike sprint I can go in and I don't know, just have a nice stretch or a foam roll yeah. or just go on the bike and just work at that nice medium pace and stay fit rather than uh, you you know like a boxer on camp where you yeah it's totally more relaxed now Okay. In, in a short while, we're, we're going to see some highlights of your career and okay. just see exactly how intense it is. <laughs> okay. But you're you, you're such a nice guy. Um, you know, not off on course. the court. Well, this is it. <laughs> this is what I was coming to. You're, you're, you're a, a tiger. I was going to say a tiger. Actually, wolf. Yeah. Uh, that's your nickname. Your nickname on yeah. the court. Um, how do you manage to be uh, such an amiable fella? 
off the court and change your persona? How have you managed to change your persona on the court, do you think? I mean, you know, history of sport is littered with a million people who've done the same. You know, you, you simply can't keep your foot to the floor, you know, on, the, on that pedal um, throughout your whole life. You know, you're going to burn out if you played mm. with intensity, if you lived with intensity the whole time. You know, have to learn over the years to know when to switch off, uh, when, know when to switch off, sorry, and know when to then be able to switch on. And, you know, when you start, I have like a little process, for example, when I was warming up for a match, and that warm up started maybe two hours before in my hotel room where my bag went on the bed and I started to pack it, and that's when I started to get into match mode and started to perhaps take on almost little by little that different persona, and that goes through your warm up, your preparation, when that, and then when that door closes and the referee says, love all, then that's when you're ready to go. But yeah, you need to uh, be able to draw a line uh, between the two. You know, if you're a nice guy, too nice on the court, you might not have the edge, mm. and if you're too intense off the court, then you're not gonna have that longevity, that rounded life, you know, so. Yeah, it's not just being tough in your competitive makeup, but it's, it's also being tough mentally as well. I'm thinking of those points which are crucial, that could decide that you've lost, you know, that single point where you know that one mistake is going to lose you the game. I mean, just the knowledge of that is a, is, would be enough to psych somebody into making a mistake. I, of course, I, I, yeah. How do you, how do you, ensure that you don't what, what, I think you, you know you definitely see it as a flip side of the coin you know there's that other side where you know if you don't take yeah. that shot on or that calculated risk you know be brave in those instances then you can beat yourself I'd rather be brave and take something on and make an error than mm. step away and go oh, if only I'd have been a bit more positive and taken yeah. a chance but most of that is sort of fine-tuned you know the hard work all of the hard work most of the hard work is done sort of away from what people see on the field of play and that's the same in any sport you know all those things that you see the playing the matches is the easy bit really yeah. because you just go right I've done all this training now let's go and showcase everything that I've and a lot of I've muscle memory in yeah what you're muscle doing. memory muscle memory yeah. everything you go okay I mean it doesn't happen overnight but you learn to say okay I put the preparation now let's go and show what I can do as opposed to always playing that with a handbrake on and being a bit mm. edgy about it. You try to just, all the work's been done and then you just try to play as free as you can. Like this is the enjoyable bit. Um, you're heavily into football. We talk about blades and owls. I'm sure you won't mind that breaking yeah, into course. this tribute uh, program to you. Um, I'm just going to ask you a question about that before we see one or two uh, uh, highlights okay. of your career. Get into um, the defensive body language. Yeah, it's a bit now, now. Coming. now then, it's a nice trick if you can do this. You're a Sheffield Wednesday supporter and a Sheffield oh, United yeah. ambassador. <laughs> How does that work? Tell it doesn't me. really. Um, I end up getting stick from both sides, so <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, no, I mean, I love my football. Um, you know, I'd love both. I'm an owl, obviously, but I'd love both Sheffield clubs to be in the... Premier League, wouldn't we all? You know, yeah. wouldn't that be great to have those big derbies? You know, even Leeds playing, you know, tomorrow night. Then. I can say that, but you're an owl. You can, no, no, but both teams in the Premier League, yeah. that's special, isn't it? You mm. know, um, you know, Manchester have got it, for example. Liverpool have got it. Um, you know, there's, it, it's, it, it's been a while since that's been the case. And obviously, if you could only have one, I'd want Wednesday. But, you know... Um, a couple of my good friends, um, uh, the McCabe family, Kevin McCabe, Simon McCabe, are big supporters of squash and have sponsored me a little bit over the years to try and uh, help me and uh, help in one or two of the youngsters sort of on my academy, for example, and really try and, I think, really do a lot through the community and, and not just football, but a lot of other sports as well. So they asked me to come on board and sort of be a little bit of a patron for what they're trying to do in the community. and. They asked me before Wednesday, so I couldn't say no. I said, oh, I you do know that I am an owl when they asked me, and they were like, no, no, we know, but, you know, as I said, it's important for them not just to showcase yeah. health through football, it's health through all sport, and as a football club, I guess it's because it's a national sport, yeah. you've got that responsibility because it is the national sport, but mm. responsibility to grow it across the board uh, in the region, not just for football. The challenge for Sheffield Wednesday now is to find a blade 
to, to be, be an no, ambassador they're, for they're them. They're all right. I think they're, they're, they're doing fine. But. All right. OK. <laughs> right, we'll come back to that. And we'll, we'll also get your thoughts on how the two teams are shaping up. Mm -hmm. uh, not so very long before the first derby of the season. But let's have a look now, a couple of minutes, at what it's been all about for Nick Matthew. There's the ball. Reset the rally. Loves that lob, Nick Matthew. Oh, what a finish! Listen to that roar! He was under the cosh, managed to reset the rally with the lob, and then the drop. Classic tactical play. He's done it. Nick Matthew has had a massive result here. Don't be afraid at home by that reaction. EJ's hair standing on end. That was a tactical masterclass from Nick Matthew. Oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Matthew leaping off the ground. Oh, wow. Dear, oh, dear. We went the wrong way there, Joe. Well, I'm sure all the viewers back home were... Still two championship balls with the number one seed, Matthew. Oh. He's done it. Matthew's done it. Nick Matthew has taken his 35th title. But he doesn't leave any of himself out there on the court, does he? It's pure emotion, uh, absolute emotion. I'm a bit emotional watching that. It seems like you're a lifetime ago already. You've not seen that package, Not that you? little package, no. No, I'm going to send it to you. Thanks. It's out there on, uh, it's out there on YouTube. Okay. Anybody can see it. But some of those moments there, you just exploded in exhilaration, sometimes relief. Yeah, a couple of it over the top. There was that one where it looked like I was going to rip my opponent's head off. Yes. Uh, he's actually a really nice guy, Ali Farag, one of the up-and-coming Egyptians that uh, I've been at. He actually beat me in my last ever professional game. Yes. And he gave me a that. good... Uh, yeah, he gave me a good looking after that day. Yes. So, That's uh, the semi-finals of the World Series in It was in Dubai, Dubai. he gave me. But that, I think that was the last time I actually got the win over him. He's number two in the world at the moment. There's a couple of wins there over Mohamed El Shabagi, who's the current world number one. Right. And Gregory Gaultier, who's been a lifelong rival from France. So there's been players who are still at the top of the game. But yeah. it is definitely funny sitting there, sitting here watching that when I know those guys... Uh, Around, they're currently in San Francisco. The, there's a big tournament in San Francisco starting today, actually, pretty much as we speak. So uh, US Opens next week, which is the first major of the season. And yeah. I think that's when it might start hitting home that it's that different. Yeah, yeah, that you'll retire yeah. and you'll be itching, perhaps. To I be don't know about that, there. but it'll just be different watching. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'm, I'm going to come to you know that transition a bit later because we've got part two to come up. James Craig will join us with his roundup and to join the chat. But it, it, it's become an issue, hasn't it? A wider issue. We'll explore this more in part two. For people who've, you know, lived on the edge within sport and had all that adrenaline, suddenly having to adjust to a life where that suddenly isn't there. Yeah. You know, and it, yeah. it, you know, and lots of people are having problems with that. Yeah. Uh, as things speak, and I'm, I'm just wondering what a sportsman or woman can do to avoid that. 
We've only got 20 seconds. But. No, it's, it's, it's very tough, a lot of planning. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably the thing I respected the most, having re properly researched it and just respected the fact that I was going to go into a whole new life and, and knew it wasn't going to be easy. So, Tell you what, we'll pick that up in part two. Because sure. I think it's a, a serious conversation. More on the owls and the blades, so all the other sport as well, with a roundup and more from Nick Matthew. Do rejoin us in five. See you then.